Is a good life keeping you from a great life? Today, we're going to expose happiness myths. Allie Worthington is a business dynamo, a busy wife, and a mother of five. An entrepreneur at heart, she shares her compelling story and success strategies in her new book, Breaking Busy, and has been featured on shows like Good Morning America and The Today Show. She also serves as executive director of Propel Women, a leadership initiative founded by Christine Kane. Working with and advising Fortune 500 companies, Worthington is a catalyst for change in a stressed out, consumer-driven world. Please help me welcome Allie Worthington. Hey, Ellie, welcome back. Hi. It's good to have you again. Great to meet you. Thank you. We have a, we met and talked about this new book of yours called Breaking Busy. And for those that maybe have, haven't heard the first program, tell me why you wrote the book, a little bit about your life as to what kind of gave you this desire to write. Well, sure. Well, I'll start off by saying my husband and I have five sons. <laughs> so every flat surface in our house is covered with sports equipment and Legos and maybe a little dog hair, if I'm going to be <laughs> honest. And we're, we both were working full time. We're teaching on Sunday morning, hosting small group. My husband was always coaching Little League and Pee Wee football. And I woke up one day and said, I can't do it. Like we look on Facebook and all the other things, we look really happy, but this busyness is breaking me. So I either have to break it or it's breaking me. And it started us on this journey of, of breaking busy. Wow. Off camera, we were, you and I were just talking a little bit and you were talking about the importance of making decisions. Let's go there and unpack some of that stuff for people because we can't really teach the whole book to them. They just need to get a hold of a copy. And I want to encourage you to do that. But where would you start in helping people in dealing with the busyness? Well, decisions are so huge because we have to make decisions every day, whether it's um, the small daily decisions or the big ones about career and family and, you know, if, if we want to move somewhere. And decisions are something that can cause people to get into a loop and get stuck. Mm -hmm. And we all know being stuck is going to waste time and we don't want to waste time because we don't want to be busy. Um, so I have this framework called the five F's of decision making. Oh, wow. So whenever you are making any decision, you can use all five of them or you can use just one of them. The first one starts off with faith. The most important thing we're going to do when we make a decision is we're going to pray about it. We're mm -hmm. going to look in scripture for answers. The second one is family. So if you have a big decision to make, how does it affect your spouse if you're married, your children, I mean, which is key. Yep. We can't make any decision without that. The third one is future. So I like to ask myself, what will future Allie think about a decision? Hmm. So any decision I'm going to make, I imagine the answer. Mm -hmm. And I ask myself, how will I feel about this in 10 days, in 10 weeks, or 10 months? Wow. You can even take it even further. So 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years. And a lot of times we will make a decision and we'll give someone an answer in the moment because short term it feels good because we don't want to disappoint them. And we know that in 10 weeks or in 10 months we'll regret that decision. So I, whenever I think about what future Allie wants to do, it helps me to make better decisions. That is so mm -hmm. true because we tend to say yes, 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 yes all the time. Yeah. And we don't want to um, hurt people or... You know, in the same area, one of my struggles is we have this wonderful large church mm -hmm. and thousands of people attend. And I always want to go for a barbecue, go to a lunch, go to a birthday party, hang out with them. Uh, but I mean, to do that, even if I was to hang out with them all once, would take years yeah. <laughs> you know, at one a day. And so I had, and so I just found that in the hallways, we'd get invited places. I'm like, oh, I want to so bad. These are amazing, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. So I finally just started telling them, you know, I had to make a decision. I mean, if you could just let me be with my wife and my kids and my crazy life. And as soon as I started saying that, mm -hmm. it's like people understood and said, that's really smart, Pastor. You're right. You go date your mm -hmm. wife and you go hang out with your kids. And they understood. But it took me a while to just say, I've yeah. got to just figure this out and not just keep saying yes. Mm -hmm and then tell Sally, oh, I think we're going for a barbecue. And she go, oh, where are we gonna fit that in? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And I find once we give people an answer or a reason why we're making a decision, people are very gracious about it. Everyone understands, but, but when we get caught up in the fear of letting other people down or momentarily disappointing them, that's one thing we can get stuck. 
Yeah, and if they don't understand, mm -hmm. that's probably not the person you want to do life with anyway. Exactly. Future <laughs> Leon wouldn't want to make plans with them in eight months. No, because <laughs> if they never understand what's important to you now, yep. then building a relationship with them is going to hurt you because mm -hmm. they're going to begin to manipulate you and control you. So those F's, so yes. talk to me a little more about them. So the first one was faith. Faith. The second one was? Family. Okay, let's go there for a minute. Yeah. How, I mean, with five boys, you must have football or trumpet or, or I mean, they're all going in different directions at the ages mm -hmm. they are right now. Oh, absolutely. And we're pretty strict about what we'll let them do. So our two oldest boys are teenagers, so they play fall and winter sports. But by the time spring comes around, we're done. We say, no, we can't do anything Good else. Too. And luckily... They don't love baseball. If yeah, they yeah. did, we might be in trouble. Um, but we normally let spring be for our younger kids, and that's when they play sports. But everyone wow. gets to do just one thing at a time. See, that's mm -hmm. so smart. When we had the same problem with all of our kids because they're all so close in age. Once they hit high school, good Lord, there is a ton <laughs> of things you could join from the yearbook to all the different sports. And we did the same thing. We sat down and said, you know what? We are going to do what's good for the family. We're not going to do what's good for just you. And at first they didn't like it. And I said, I don't care. I said, you'll understand. And, cause, and I knew others that were just going crazy. Mom's taxi and dad's taxi and rushing back and forth and doo-doo. And your kids need more family time. That's what I tell people. You know, they don't need to be on another sport and another sport and another sport and another and bring it and, you know, because that, that's not going to help in the long run. I mean, it keeps them busy enough. One lady told me, well, it keeps them away from drugs, keeps them away from girls, keeps them away from... I said, there is real wisdom to that. But what about keeping them away from your family time? And so I like that decision you made. I think that's really smart. There's something to be said for kids at home playing Legos and hanging out with friends in the neighborhood and being bored. You know, so true. I, I I love a good bored kid because they're <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna learn to they're gonna learn uh, who they are and yep. how to explore and not have life completely scheduled. You know, if we are living frantic, busy lives and we're scheduling out everything for our kids, that's all the kids know. Yeah, we have a saying in our house. Uh, they're saying I'm bored. Mm -hmm. So we now are saying if you're bored, you're boring because you're looking for someone else to entertain you. That's right, that's great. <laughs> so you're boring because you need somebody <laughs> else. So you go decide what you want to do and hang out. And it's true, and now it's amazing. Like, uh, the kids are all grown up, but they love coming over all the time. And they'll come over and they'll just be, sometimes it's so busy we're all talking a mile. Other times we're just enjoying a show in the front room, two are over here working on an iPad, but doing fun things with it. And you can just sense this piece of family just hanging out. And it's so wonderful. And I don't think a lot of people get that. Mm -mm. No. Mm, it's really key. After family. Oh, after family would be future. So that's where future Allie and future Leon comes in. Okay. And then after that is fulfillment. Okay, talk so about fulfillment. Fulfillment is key. I believe God plants passions and gifts in us. And all through life, throughout different seasons of life, He gives us ways to, to bring those to light to live those out. Like, I love learning things and sharing things. When I was a little girl, I was that annoying little girl that would check out all the books from the library and <laughs> carry them around and want to share information. Yeah. And now I get to do that through books or through opportunities like this. It's that same gift. He's just giving me different ways to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So whenever we want to make a decision, we want to think, do, is this option fulfilling for me? Do I enjoy it? Wow. So fulfillment is key. And then the final F is friends. Um, we all know wise counsel is important. I mean, that's biblical. But we all have a tendency sometimes to let too many people weigh in on our decisions. Um, I like to let the right people weigh in on mm -hmm. my decisions. You know, I'm not going to ask 500 people on Facebook what I should do. Um, <laughs> that's so well said. <laughs> because you'll get a lot of crazy answers. Oh, oh, yeah. But those people who really earn the right to weigh into your life and whose lives bear good fruit, those are the people that I want to weigh in on my life. Wow. Let's take a break right here. And then when we come back, I want to go continue. And we'll just take some of the, not every thought, but some of the thoughts we have time for and help people because this is really good. My guest today is Allie. And we're looking at this book, Breaking Busy. I need to get you a copy. How to Find Peace and Purpose in a World of Crazy. We'll be right back with Allie. So I did a bunch of research on how to use social media well. And what I found is the more time people spend on Facebook, 
and other types of social media, the more depressed they can become. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. What would you say if I asked you what's missing in life? Like how would your world change if you could access the miraculous but in a totally normal and natural way? That's the Spirit Contemporary Life. You are designed to go into that business world and be better than anybody out there. In fact, let me just prophesy God's original intent is that every believer be at the top of the heap. Get up and live so big the world gasps at what God can do through a person. Welcome back. My guest today is Allie Worthington, and we're talking about this book, Breaking Busy, and just looking at great wisdom principles of getting your life in the direction that you really wanted. All right, Breaking Busy, where are we going to go next? Well, I would like to talk to you, you being a man and all, <laughs> about emojis. Emojis, okay. Now, you know those little smiley faces yep. and text messages. So I believe that emojis can actually help us break busy. Now, my husband and I communicate a lot via text. You and your wife as well? Mm-hmm. Okay, so just think of the, of the times you, you've written a sentence to her that could seem a little harsh because you're not using your voice. Right. So I, I, I tell the story a lot. I'm, getting, I'm landing in a plane one day. I get a text from my husband. He says, when will you be home for dinner? <laughs> and I said, when will I be home for dinner? Because you've missed me so much. <laughs> or because you're planning what time to have dinner. And he said, both. I said, well, that, that doesn't work. And he said, okay, when will you be home for dinner? Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. And I go, that <laughs> makes me feel loved. This is great. And so my husband and I, I, I keep trying to arm wrestle with him just to use emojis, emojis. But communicating effectively really helps us break busy. Yeah. So because we live in a world where it's not always face-to-face, -face, we're not hearing each other's emotions. We're not reading each other's facial expressions. We're doing it by a text, an email. I am very pro-emoji. So, okay. so we can help lessen a miscommunication, help express the heart behind what we're communicating. Um, I, I'm all out on a, um, on a strategic plan to make everybody use emojis. And so what about their business? texts and emails though. <laughs> I would look as a guy kind of weird putting these little hearts and smiling okay, faces. Okay, <laughs> there's, no, there's no hearts in business. Okay. Um, now in emails, I think we have to be, for business email, we have to be extra careful to make sure that when we read our email before it gets sent, what I do is I read it aloud to make sure the tone shows through. Now, for, but yes, we're, yeah. but we're probably not going to be texting that much in business. No, but with friends and, and things, you're, you're right, because yeah. I find myself 
now because you get misunderstood a few times. Yep. And you realize, okay, I need some context here too. Exactly. You know, so hey, I'm a little bit tired. I can't wait to see you. Let's mm -hmm. grab lunch a little early. And then you go, okay, now I, you know what I mean? Exactly. Because I, we're prone to bam, 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 just blast out one-liners that I've, are directive, but they're not at all telling you how I feel. Now, my husband cheats. He uses the man version of emoji, so it'll just be the little colon and in the closed parentheses because he won't bear to use the yellow face. <laughs> so you can do that. <laughs> I'm the same way. I don't use, I actually don't, I don't use emojis. I, I might put a smiley face in or I'll try to use more adjectives or mm -hmm. clauses. But, I'm, I'm uh, saying even, even with your wife and your daughters especially, I, I think it'll help break busy because that just makes for clear communication. That is funny. All right, where are we going to go next? <laughs> Um, I'd love to talk about social media some. Okay, let's do it. Um, social media, I love social media. We get to meet people, we get to connect about things we love, but there can be a lot of wasted time with social media. Mm. I've found that especially when I'm stressed out or over capacity, as we talked about before, that um, I will tend to just passively scroll through Facebook and through Instagram and stare at other people's lives instead of investing in my own. And so I did a bunch of research on how to use social media well. And what I found is the more time people spend on Facebook and other types of social media, the more depressed they can become. Really? Yeah, and scientists think this is because when we aren't engaging with other people, when we're just taking it in and passively scrolling, subconsciously we compare our real life with other people's highlight reels. That's and the true. way you can fix that is to engage. So to like pictures, to comment on them, and to really treat people like they're your friends on social media and not just, not just absorb it. Mm -hmm. I think it's so true. I think it's good for everyone to remember that on social media, everybody's six feet tall, drives a vet, has a wonderful spouse, and lots of money, and is yes. enjoying life, and everyone thinks they're amazing, and it's not Especially true. Instagram. Instagram is it's happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. Yeah. And every Sunday, or most Sundays, I'll post a funny picture of the whole, my whole family in the car together going to church. Sometimes the kids are fighting in the back. That's crazy. But, you know, I don't post pictures of the laundry room because nobody really wants to see the laundry room. Like, you know, there's a part of social media where we do want to show our best moments and it's always just reminding ourselves yeah. of everybody's highlight reels. That's true. You know, because we've got five kids, I mean, you do too, we actually use, oh, I forget now which app it is, where it's only our kids, Sally and I, we have one thing that we use so that we can all be sending pictures from wherever we are of everything. And you, if you use you know, the, the gadgets and the stuff properly, you can really be in everyone's life. Yeah. And uh, because like right now while I'm here, I've got a granddaughter, so she'll, Tamara will put little pictures and dad, here she is and she's doing this and I'm, oh, mm -hmm. and I'll send back a little movie. Or, and so if you use it right, even for family things, you can just have, you lock it off on these apps and just enjoy them. And because some people are just all negative, it's like, iPads are from the devil. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, you better get a little more contemporary that because they are here to stay. That's so when I say, have you seen the Bible app? Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I mean, my study time is cut down, I'll bet you a tenth of it, mm -hmm. because I can just access so much so quickly from all sorts of Bibles and apps and different things like that. It's funny, I did once get called out in church in the second row for texting in church, and I had to say, I'm just taking notes. I'm Ooh. sermon notes. <laughs> So we're definitely reaching that that phase in society where we we it's just part of what we do. It makes it's everything true. a lot better. I know we can be in the middle of a service and afterwards when you go to social media you'll find out that people are taking pictures and writing phrases during worship and praise, during special numbers, during your message one liners are going out there. Mm -hmm. So everybody it's really is a different world. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with your family, do your boys have cell phones? My two oldest do, so they're 14 and 17, but I'm super strict about it. So Tell me about that. What are the rules for them? Well, social media is key. That's my big rule. So the oldest being 17, I didn't really let him be on Instagram until he was 15, and then it was private because as you're an adolescent and learning how you fit in in the world and you have these issues of worth and value, I didn't want their worth and their value measured in terms of likes and comments. I mean, thank goodness it wasn't around when I was a teenage girl. I mean, I see pictures of these sweet girls that are in high school with my boys, and they're posting pictures of themselves all the time. And, 
you know, getting comments about their attractiveness. And to me, I think that's very dangerous. Yep. Um, so I wanted to protect them from that as much as I can. Now the oldest is 17. There's not much I can do. Um, <laughs> but until you're 14, you're not getting a phone in, in my house. And you're definitely yep. not getting on social media. Nah. You know, <laughs> they say that there's so many people today, especially the younger generation, that when they do something, let's say they go horseback riding, mm -hmm. you know, they go and they just some kind of a dude ranch and they've got an, an, an afternoon with their family, they literally will not in, sit there and enjoy and be present. They're too busy taking pictures, self videos, and sending them out as to what they're doing so that everyone else is impressed with what they're doing. And it's like they don't really they don't really feel like they've done anything special until everyone else thinks they've done something special. Mm -hmm. And I think it destroys your ability to just enjoy your own life. It really does, and I've tried to fight against it, and I don't know if we really can fight against no. it. It seems like that's the culture right now. Mm -hmm. But with everything we know, there's always a pendulum switch. It's true. So what's going to happen is, you know, in a few years, the cool thing is going to be to do things privately and to not share it. It's true. And we're just going to keep going back and forth. I talk to people all the time now who tell me I've gone off Facebook. And I go, what? They say, yeah, I just turned it off. I just, you know, it was, I got tired of reading everybody else's made up life and, or they're all their complaints nonstop. And, mm -hmm. and, and they said, it's so wonderful. So I think the pendulum does swing mm -hmm. back and forth. And, and otherwise, it's just going to destroy lives. And people finally get smart. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. This has been awesome. Thanks for having me. My guest today has been Allie Worthington with Breaking Busy how to find peace and purpose in your world of crazy. We'll be right back. With the help of technology, it is now easier than ever to connect with friends and family all over the globe. And for the first time ever, Springs Church is available to watch online. Get access to Spear Contemporary Church every single week. You'll enjoy great music and an inspiring message from Leon Fontaine. You'll even be able to connect with people from around the world. This is my personal invitation to join me on Springs Online. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Allie Worthington. It's so important in today's fast-paced world to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and being aware of how you spend your time. Because the reality is people matter. Good relationships are because of invested time. You know, I want to talk to you about something that's really important to me. It's the concept of being spirit contemporary. All of us are called to be spirit contemporary. What does that mean? Well, in the Bible, every person that God used, he had to make sure that they knew how to connect with God and listen to God and let God use them in miraculous ways. But at the same time, they had to know the people group that they were going to, which is why he even had Moses raised in Egypt. So he understood the culture. He had to go get God's people 
out of. Think about Joseph who saved the then known world and he literally had to go learn that culture in Potiphar's house. Then in the jails he learned how to handle crooks and thieves and God used him and took him to the top of the nation and not only saved that nation from starvation but even his own people and his own family. The Bible is filled with examples of these two areas that God has always working on us to be close to God. Or as it says about Jesus, he had favor with God, but then he had favor with man. It's so important that this gospel get out there, but in a spirit contemporary way. I'm going to ask you to join this team, this cause. Could you donate, say, at least $30 or more? Because that money is going to help people come to know Jesus Christ. It's so a, it's a crucial right now that there are many doors that God has opened to us. And spirit contemporary seems to be this fascination with the world and with the church world. We want to teach them how to really be a believer who is spirit contemporary. And your gift will not only help us to retrain the body of Christ, but people who have never heard the gospel, when they hear it in a spirit contemporary way, they get saved so quickly. Everywhere I go, there's just a large amount of people making decisions for Jesus Christ. Would you go to your phone right now and for a gift of $30, I want to send you a resource that'll actually equip you and teach you the different skills and how to be spiritually alive, operating in the power of God, but then at the same time developing the skills to be contemporary, cool, relevant in the world that you live in. Thank you so much. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Join us again on Monday for The Leon Show that Jesus was the purest, most powerful man we ever knew, and everywhere he went, he attracted everything from alcoholics to thieves to prostitutes. They loved him and were attracted to him and came to his meetings.